Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of A Chapter a Day Keeps the Doctor Away. My name is Alan, otherwise known as Heesby, and I'm from ReverseThieves.com as well as the Speakeasy Podcast. And this time I'm looking at Fate Extra CCC Foxtail Chapter 4, The Garden Fallen from the Sky. And this time we get a bit more exposition about what's going on. Um, and a little more idea of what's new as opposed to last chapter that was a lot more well if you didn't play fate extra here's kind of what's going on this is kind of the the new realms that uh ccc and foxtail are providing everybody and it starts off kind of like again in ccc where Castor refuses to tell her master what her true name is until absolutely necessary because he's still a little adult and therefore she doesn't want to basically have him have the vulnerability of being able to accidentally give away who she is. And... After that, um, we kind of get uh, everybody who is here, or everybody who we think is here, kind of deciding what to do. As it turns out, um, everybody here was ripped from the regularly scheduled Holy Grail War uh, on the light side of the moon. And uh, it's not exactly clear or at least I could not pick up on, uh, like, what phase of the Holy Grail War had occurred to get them all here. Um, so, like, I don't know how many rounds took place. I'm not sure it's that important, but um, obviously the Holy Grail War had been going on. So, part of me wonders if the flashbacks the main character are having are to um, the Holy Grail War that he was, you know, ripped from, or if they're actually memories from Fate Extra, being that this is a Fate Extra, you know, sequel. Um, is everybody else just remembering the Holy Grail War he they were ripped from and he's actually remembering the stuff from fate extra you know because he's you know the the copy of the character who seemingly died at the end of fate extra and instead got transported here we'll explain why his memory is weird but we'll see how that all goes down um once again i haven't played ccc so this might, like, duh, if you've played CCC, it's obvious. But that hasn't got an English translation yet. So I'm just going to have to make wild assumptions until then. Um, but yeah, the main character totally seems to have fragmented memories of a previous Holy Grail War. Um, but only, like, bits and pieces and little insights into people. But the average, all the other people just remember this mysterious blob coming and sucking them up and taking them here, which is Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, which I feel like somebody is like, man, if you smoke some weed and then you read Fate Extra CCC while listening also to Wizard of Oz, they match up, man, they match up. Which I also feel like you could probably um, match up Dark Side of the Moon to like arcs in the fate, you know, in the Foxtail manga, because I feel like everything else has been done with that and Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. So like, this tarp chapter is totally us versus them. 
But this chapter, man, it's totally money. Because you see, this character was defeated because they were too greedy. Just like the lyrics of money. So, there you go, English majors. You know, who are type moon fans. And like Pink Floyd. You know, pretty much everybody. Um, you should read the whole Foxtel manga and then some, and then use, and then interpret it through Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. I mean, it's just the obvious thing that everybody should do. But yes, they're on the Dark Side of the Moon and they can't get back to the regular Holy Grail War because there is this sea of complex numbers which is apparently super fatal. Because apparently A plus BI is deadly. Although, if uh, you know anything about complex numbers, um, they're kind of a way of expressing imaginary numbers, which I think is supposed to be another clear sign that Sakura is involved in this more than either she's letting on or that she knows because a kind of like minor esoteric fact about Sakura from the original Fate Stay Night is that her sister Rin is like super gifted in the five elements. But Sakura is super gifted in imaginary numbers. That's like her origin and um, like wizarding special. So them being trapped in a weird part of the, you know, the moon cell surrounded by imaginary numbers seems very Sakura-esque. Hmm? So, I mean, also you might have been tipped off to that by the Sakura maze, but I'm just saying that them being trapped in a sea of complex numbers um, is probably another subtler hit, whereas the Sakura maze is like, well, if you didn't catch that, um, you know, there's the big pointing arrow sign. But once again, another weird tangent. Um, we find out that only three people who have been transported over here still have servants. Everybody else is still alive because of the weirdness of the back end of, you know, the moon cell. But most of them don't have servants. And they're like, well, time really runs weird here. And pretty much everything is like running weird here because no one's actually supposed to get back here. This is kind of, you know, the system admin part of the moon cell and we're not supposed to be back here and a lot of the rules run differently and, you know, once again, deadly sea of complex numbers um, and the enemies are pretty fierce. So if you don't have a servant, you know, Basically, everybody here who got transported over barely made it to the school, which is a safe zone. Because, you know, if they had spent any time in the dungeon, monsters would have killed them without a servant. And so, the main character has Caster, Leo has Gawain, and they know that there's one other woman in the building who has a servant, but she's basically locked herself in this storage shed or the storage locker and has locked it from the inside and won't let anybody else come in. So they've basically pretty much written her off. And so they want Leo being oddly affectionate and friendly is like, all right, since we're the only two people with servants, we should team up together and go through this Sakura maze, which is linked to this big Sakura tree in, you know, the school courtyard. And hopefully that has some path 
through the, you know, the deadly sea of complex numbers back to the light side of the moon where, you know, we can go and hopefully participate in the Holy Grail War and, you know, win the best men win past that point. But for now, you know, we've got to get back there before, so we can even get home, let alone win the Holy Grail War. And Leo super wants the team up. And um, Rin doesn't want anything to do with Leo. She's like, what? Let's, let's all the good people who aren't part of the secret cabal trying to take over the world work together. And Leo can go, you know, jump in a lake. And if he gets back home, fine. If he doesn't, woohoo, better for everybody. But Leo's like, we don't know what's down there. And uh, why don't we all work together under me? But in a nicer way than how he did it in Fate Extra. So um, we also learn that uh, Julius is here. Although, once again, he doesn't have a servant. Um, he still has his mad, crazy kung fu skills, but he doesn't have, you know, his uh, martial arts master servant. And Shinji is also here, once again, not having uh, buxom pirate rider. So, or what do you call it? Star of the Uncharted series, grandfather, Sir Francis Drake, girl version. And yeah, Rin and uh, Ronnie also don't have their servants. Uh, and you get a lot of weird Ronnie tries to do like ast astrology jokes throughout the thing. So other than a little bit of like Ronnie, weirdly, if she is even flirting with the main character and Leo flirting with the main character and then pretending he isn't flirting with the main character and pretending like, yeah, man, I've had lots of sex with lots of people, both genders. That's Leo. And then everybody was like, what? He's like, nah, I'm just joking around. So, um, but yeah, uh, this is an interesting chapter. I am once again curious how much of this is in CCC. Does everybody in CCC still have their servants uh, at this point? Or is this uh, just a foxtail thing? Because I'm pretty sure from what I've seen of CCC, everybody still kind of has their servants. So do they get them in the Sakura maze? Or is this, you know, a manga-only thing? Once again, there's a lot of material in this that is uh, not in CCC. It's an original material, so. Um, but, you know, we now see that they've got to explore this Sakura dungeon to hopefully get back to where they need to be. Um... And we've kind of have now most, if not all, of the players of basically Team Get Home. Um, you know, the people in the Sakura dungeon, you know, blocking their way home, we don't know about them yet. Well, we've seen one or two of them. Uh, some of which are original characters just for the manga. But that were, you know, based on ideas that they wanted to put into the game, but cut for time and, you know, cost. So, hmm. Um, interesting. I really wish I had played for CCC. It would really help me out. But uh, in a way, it kind of makes me, when I go and play CCC, being like, ah, how much of this is, you know, how much of what I know from Foxtail it's correct, and how much of it is going to have a twist? Whereas Foxtail is actually the twist. It'll be like CCC is the twist. So, 
Um, Kester, still being a busty babe. Um, I did like the little more plotting Kester of the game as opposed to jealous lady. Not that she was a jealous lady, but I wish they'd play that up a little more than, what do you call it? Off my man, ladies, Kester. But uh, we'll see how much scheming Kester comes into play when we're actually in the Sakura maze. But uh, fun chapter. Still not exactly sure what to expect, but uh, that's always cool. So uh, see you guys next time.